Hey everybody, today we are going to take a look at Keanu, the first movie from comedic duo Key and Peele, co-written by Jordan Peele and Alex Rubens and directed by Peter Atencio. Keegan-Michael Key plays a guy named Clarence, who is your typical suburban dad. He's got a good corporate job, a wife, kids, and an unhealthy obsession with George Michael. His friend Rel, played by Jordan Peele, is a slacker who spends most of his time smoking pot and feeling sorry for himself since his girlfriend just walked out on him. But one day, a cute little kitty cat suddenly arrives on his doorstep, and it immediately cheers him up and turns his life around. And he names it Keanu. For some reason. And for a while, it looks like all is right with the world. But then Rel's house is burglarized, and poor little Keanu is kidnapped. Rel and Clarence soon learn that a ruthless gangster who goes by the name Cheddar has taken the cat, so they launch a plan to rescue him. And do I even have to tell you hilarity ensues? It's Key and Peele. Of course hilarity ensues. It's what they do. I really liked these two when they were on Comedy Central, and I'm sure like many of you, I was very sad to see them go, but it's nice that we get to see them again, this time on the big screen. And if you've seen the trailer, and really at this point who hasn't, I can confirm that it is every bit as funny as you think it is. Even though when you get down to it, it really is just a two-joke movie. The first joke is how everyone in this movie loves this kitten, even the most hardened criminal. They all want Keanu and will risk anything, even their very lives, to have him. And to be fair, Keanu is pretty fucking adorable, so you know what? I can buy that. And the second joke is Key and Peele, these two very polite and civilized gentlemen from the suburbs, trying to act like gangsters. After Keanu is taken, they learn from Rel's pot dealer, Holka, who is played by Will Forte, hilariously, I might add, that they were taken by the 17th Street Blips, which is basically everyone that was rejected from the Bloods and the Crips. So, they're the Blips. So to infiltrate the gang, they have to become a pair of walking stereotypes, basically, and the names they adopt are Tectonic and Shark Tank, which is just delightfully absurd. And when they first meet Cheddar, who is played by Method Man, they are mistaken for a couple of guys known as the Allentown Boys, who are basically Boondock Saints knockoffs. Uh, these very skilled and deadly silent assassins who are also played by Key and Peele. And basically, they have to spend the rest of the movie doing a terrible job of acting like gangsters. And it is so very funny because these two are incredibly talented and you have to have a lot of talent to do a convincing job of acting badly. It's one thing to act badly on accident, but to do it on purpose is something else because, like I've said before, Portraying incompetence requires great intelligence. And their little wannabe gangster act leads to some very funny moments, especially when Clarence is trying to convince a car full of gangsters to appreciate the music of George Michael. And that scene goes on probably far longer than it should have, but every minute of it is just a riot. To be fair, not every joke in the movie hits, and there are a few moments here and there, a few small moments, mind you, where the movie kinda grinds to a halt. There's a scene involving Anna Ferris, who is playing herself, or at least a parody of herself, that didn't work as well as it probably should have, and the way this scene is resolved at the end of the movie, I'm not gonna go into spoilers, but let me just say something happens in that scene, and at the end of the movie, they just kind of hand wave it away, which I thought was kind of bullshit. In fact, the third act overall is kind of a mess, especially when Luis Guzman shows up completely out of nowhere, basically reprising his character from Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And he was funny, don't get me wrong, but it felt a little weird that they're adding another villain at such a late stage in the game. There was also kind of a romance between Rel and this girl named Hi C, who's played by Tiffany Haddish, that felt horribly underdeveloped. But the movie still succeeds in spite of its shortcomings, and it is largely thanks to Key and P themselves and their amazing chemistry. These two are just so talented and work so well together, I don't think this movie would have been anywhere near as funny as it was if it had been anyone else playing these roles. Some of the funniest moments in this movie occur when it's just the two of them on camera talking to each other. Honestly, if this movie had just been 90 minutes of Key and Peele in a car shooting the shit, it probably still would have been just as entertaining. 
That's not to say they don't work well apart. In fact, there is one very funny scene that just involves Key in a drug-induced dream sequence where he talks with Keanu Reeves in an uncredited cameo as the voice of Keanu the Cat. And I am so glad they found a way to work him into this movie because originally they wanted him to do the voice of the cat, but they reached out to his people and they politely told him no because apparently his managers are idiots. But then Keanu Reeves himself saw the trailer and thought, oh my God, I gotta be a part of this. So he reached out to them. And by then most of the movie had already been filmed, but they found a way to work him in and I'm so glad they did. It was hilarious. So final verdict. I would definitely recommend this one, at least as a matinee. If you're a Key and Peele fan, you pretty much know what you're getting into. The director and co-writer have both worked on Key and Peele's TV show in the past, so if you like their style of humor, you're probably going to enjoy this one. And if nothing else, how many movies are you going to see with a cute little kitty cat wearing a do-rag and a gold chain? That right there is worth the price of admission alone. So if you haven't already, go check out Keanu. And until next time, take care.